Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So, uh, one of my viewers, James Ball, asked to see a more detailed write-up and review of my forced air blower, which this is pretty much the crux of it right here. I'll splice in some video here in a second of it actually running while I was running, uh, making Damascus at uh, Dragon's Watch Forge and Foundry a couple weekends ago. But in this video here, I'm going to do a bit of a detailed breakdown on how I made this, what it's made up of, and what its general purpose is, and how it fits in with my Travel Forge. I have two general burners that go into it, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, so here's my travel forge. This is an R22 refrigerant canister that has been lined with two inches of K-wool and then about a quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch-ish of uh, Mizzou 3000 degree castable refractory. This forge serves most of my purposes day to day and for most of my purposes I use this burner. This is a three-quarter inch uh, Z burner or solar burner. It's made of a um, warp reducer, or t it's a it's a reducing T. It goes from like one and a quarter inch here to three quarters of an inch here, with a one and a quarter inch hole here for the airflow to come in. This is a three quarter inch iron pipe, um, and to a stainless steel flare at the end. Up here, I have a eighth inch pipe nipple that comes through into here, which you can probably see there. Maybe not. Anyway, it's in there. And in the end of that, it is threaded for this. This is a 035 Tweco MIG welding tip. And this is what I use for an orifice. And of course, you know, I have a choke here so I can control the oxygen flow. So whether I'm using a uh, reducing environment or carburizing environment, you know, otherwise known as carburizing environment, an oxidizing environment, neutral environment, so forth, inside of the welder, this is controlled by this here. <coughs> or inside the welder, inside the forge. Durr, I can talk. Anyway, so for most of my purposes, this burner right here serves very well. This will get up to welding temperature. <clears throat> However, if I'm going to do something large, like if I'm going to use, going to start forging on a very large hunk of steel for a drift, such as that there, that's a one and a half inch piece of tool steel, or, oops, sorry, I'm swinging you guys around like a crazy person. If I'm gonna forge out some Damascus like this here, um, this forge will get up to those temperatures. However, it takes a long time for larger stock. So, in order to alleviate that problem, I built this. This is my forced air burner. Now, the way this works, let me go back over here. <coughs> this is a one and a half inch pipe nipple that's welded to the forge. These quarter inch stainless steel screws are what hold this burner in. All I have to do is unscrew all three of these. This burner comes completely out this entire contraption will screw right on and sit right there. Now this is pretty simple, pretty basic setup here. This is all inch and a half pipe. This is an inch and a half pipe. This is an inch and a half um, gate valve. Goes up and down like this to control the airflow. <clears throat> this is an elbow with a quarter inch pipe nipple shoved through the end. It comes down to about here and welded into the end of it is, or not welded into the end of it, but screwed on the end of it is a pipe cap like that that has a, I think I have an eighth inch hole in it. I'm not exactly sure. You can see it there, I think. No, nope, you can't see it. I can see it, but the camera can't see it. Yeah, I'm gonna wreck the house here. Anyway, I'll break out a flashlight and show it to you in a minute. But this is what all that serves as an orifice on there. So if I decide it's too big or if it's too small or if I wanna change the orifice, I can just unscrew this, change out caps, and, uh, you know, put a different one with a smaller orifice on it if I want to. So speaking of, oh, and of course, supplying the air power <coughs> is your typical $12 Walmart hair dryer. When I built this rig, this is what I bought for a blower. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I taped the, taped the cool air button down on it. And I fully intended to buy an actual real blower and replace that with it. That was just a temporary measure just to get some airflow in it. Honestly, it works so good, I haven't bothered to replace it yet. Eventually I will, but for right now, 
you can see where I duct tape it on the end. I put it on low for most things. If I really need to get up to extremely high temperature, I put it on high and crank open the propane. And uh, it works It works shockingly good. So whenever this burns out, I'll get around to buying an actual real uh, blower for it. So give me a second. I'll disassemble this a little bit, and I'll be right back and show you exactly what the pipe inside of here looks like. Okay. Here we are with this section taken off. There is the quarter-inch ID pipe nipple with the cap on the end with an eighth inch hole. Now what's interesting is you would figure that the lip of that cap sticking out like that is going to seriously impede the airflow. It actually doesn't. What it does serve to do though is interbulate that airflow. That's a five dollar word for make a whole lot of tur turbulence and more thoroughly mix the air with the gas as this is going into the chamber so it burns a little bit more efficiently. Now mind you it only has a few inches to do that but it's better than nothing. So this actually works extremely well. With the setup right here with this little Conair freaking hair dryer that I paid twelve dollars for. This thing will take a block of steel two inches tall by two inches wide by six inches long and turn it into a puddle in about ten minutes if I don't pay attention to it. So that's pretty much the ins and outs of this setup here. Um, so I'm just gonna cut in a little bit more footage of it working and that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any further questions, uh, if there's something you want to see in a little bit more detail, um, let me know and I'll do another one. So thanks guys. Have a